What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So a couple of you guys have asked me, should I learn JavaScript before I can do cross-site scripting attacks? The answer is 100% yes, and I'm going to explain to you guys exactly why in this video. So let's get right into it, shall we? First of all, real quick, I want you guys to know that Red CTF is happening on the 5th of September. I challenge each and every one of you to take on this beautiful box built by Andreas and the Art42. Thank you guys so much. Let's get right into the video, shall we? Now for cross-site scripting, the clue is in the name, scripting, it stands for JavaScript. You're going to do a JavaScript attack vector and you're trying to manipulate the JavaScript actions on the target. So it's really, really important that you know what the hell you're doing. So of course, JavaScript is going to be very important in this. First of all, it really, really matters because you need to know what attack vector to pick. Of course, you're going to need to know some of the backend uh, specifications of the browsers. You're going to be needing to know how the web server handles your requests. You're, needing, you're going to need to know how to fight a web application filter. That's all very important. But once you're in the system, once you have your cross-site scripting and tag vector, because you can, of course, also just go to a website, look for, exam for, for example, um, cross-site scripting and tag vector sheet sheets on GitHub, and just copy and paste all of those tag vectors into every single field that you see, and you can go on that way. But once you have your attack vector, it's really important that you know what the hell you're doing to escalate the impact as well. Say, for example, you copy one of the attack vectors and it's going to be a script alert one and then a slash script to end the tag. You copy it, you paste it somewhere and you get your alert pop up. Of course, you can stop there, but that's going to be a medium impact at most. It's not going to be maybe a high because some programs might rate it as a high. But you can so easily raise the impact of that cross-site scripting by knowing just a little bit of JavaScript. You can, for example, try to steal some cookies that don't have the proper flags enabled by just getting those cookies, putting them in a URL and making a get request to your own server. Your server's logs are going to contain the variables that you put in the URL because the access logs contain those variables. You could try to execute a JavaScript function on the page. Um, you can try to do so much with da JavaScript, it's ridiculous. And of course, it's also really important that some uh, websites, most websites even, they're not just going to um, not just going to release their application, their software, and not check for those basic attack factors that you can find online. This is something you can easily automate. You can just look for attack factors online that you want to try, and you can put that into a script. So that's really important that you know that those things are uh, easily automatable because then you start realizing that you can also, that companies will just do those things before they even start a bug bounty program. It would be really unwise to release a bug bounty program that you haven't tested properly because you know that bug bounty programs can cost you a whole lot if you don't, if say for example somebody finds a critical or an exceptional vulnerability you're going to have to pay them. That's why bug bounties are made, you know? So you're going to test for those basic vulnerabilities real, real well. And uh, in bug bounties, this is more like a general tip, it's really important that you know how to dig really deeply. That's what you guys probably know from watching my channel. But you're not going to find basic OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities on basic functionality. You're going to be have to be uh, adept at finding different functionalities. And that's also true in cross-site scripting. Those basic attack factors, they're going to be tested. So you're going to need to be able to come up with your own attack factors. Let's say, for example, you have your greater than sign. If it's blocked by a web application filter, you'll have to know what kind of other options you have, what kind of possibilities you have. Um, by the way, sorry for the flies, guys. It's been like really warm here. So we've been sleeping with the windows open. That's obviously not a great idea. So um, when you do your cross-site scripting attack, let's say sometimes your attack factor can also be inserted into a piece of JavaScript and you can manipulate that piece of JavaScript through code injection. 
that's also cross-site scripting, you know? So it's really important that you're able to recognize where you can insert those cross-site scripting attack vulnerabilities, know what vulnerability to pick, know what, uh, what cross-site scripting attack factor to pick. And by know what vulnerability, I mean, of course, you have different types of vulnerabilities as well. You have your uh, reflected cross-site scripting, your stored cross-site scripting, uh, your DOM cross-site scripting. Those are all different types of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And if you want to uh, get any good at it, you'll need to be able to understand them all and apply them all where necessary as well. That's something that's really important as well, you guys. You have to know which type of attack factor to apply where. And you're only going to get that knowledge by, uh, you know, just doing it, by testing more, by finding more cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Just practice a lot, you know. I'm going to give you guys a basic guide on cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that I really liked. I followed it as well in the beginning to get a more basic understanding of what types of attack factors there are. But you'll need to learn some basic JavaScript. There's no getting around that because you need to know what functions you're calling. You need to know how to call a function. You need to know some basic stuff from JavaScript before you can get into the more advanced stuff. And that's where the real bounties are going to lay. They're not going to be in the top level functionality is what I call it. They're going to be really hidden and you're going to have to look for them very properly. And before you can do that, you really, really need to have a good basis. It's also really important to understand what type of cross-site scripting vulnerability you're going to test. So are you testing for reflected? Even blind cross-site scripting is a really important one because there you really need to know what you're doing. And it's also one that's often overlooked, but blind cross-site scripting could be a possibility, you know, if it's, uh, if it's like a tech factor that you can insert into your web website and some management interface in the backend opens your attack factor and it fires, you need to know when that happens, you know. It's also really important that, say for example, if you enter your address, that you have a solid understanding of where that address is being stored and where it is being used. So if you think about it really well, it's not just about the scripting, it's not just about the attack factors, it's also about knowing your stuff. A lot of these in, uh, errors, a lot of these attacks happen on integration points. And that's the last point I wanted to touch on. If you really want to go uh, looking for cross-site scripting attack factors, it's important that you look at proper integration points as well. Say, for example, your target has a website, but that website uh, also has a mobile app, but your mobile app is not in scope. Say, for example, your mobile app has an endpoint, it uses an endpoint differently than your website. So you have an address entry form and you can enter an address into your uh, website or you can enter it via the mobile application. But both use a different API. Maybe the website API is not vulnerable, but maybe the mobile API is vulnerable. So indirectly by testing that mobile part you're not it's not in scope of course the mobile application but if the api goes to the same part and the, to do as the website and that part is in scope you can of course test those mobile endpoints again and that's really where you're going to have to find for example like say the normal endpoint the more the website endpoint might not be able to accept any cross-site scripting attack factors but you might be able to insert it via your mobile endpoint <coughs> or something really stupid, you can enter an address, that address gets ported directly into JavaScript without being sanitized, so it gets popped up somewhere. Um, you might be able to manipulate the JavaScript again. This was a little bit of my advice for should you learn JavaScript if you want to get familiar with cross-site scripting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really like it. If you guys could like the video, I would really appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching everybody. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys, see you later.